Hi, I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I'm here with Mark Lassoff of Framework TV. Mark is preparing you for the jobs of the 21st century, but not with boring, dull content. He actually has people that are really entertaining and our teachers too, so that you learn what you need to learn in a fun way. Hi, Mark. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you for inviting me. Sure. So tell us all about it. Framework Television is a video on-demand service that teaches digital skills like coding, web development, and digital design. We have loads of free content that you can access and learn from that's available on the web, on your mobile device, and on your streaming video device like your Roku or Amazon Prime or Amazon TV. And you were telling me you have a lot of free content right now because you know people are losing their jobs and they may have to pivot to a new type of career. And if they like programming, then you have just a solution for them, right? Right. If you want to learn the basics of coding, we can teach you that, or the basics of designing and developing a website or a mobile application. Um, and it's available, like I said, on the web. We've got a great community of learners. And then for people who are more serious and career oriented, we have a low cost program that'll get you ready for the professional world of development. And when you're done with that program, you have certifications, confidence and confidence to go out there and get your first job. And the end result of that program is really a portfolio of digital work that you've done and completed that'll really make you stand out from the competition trying to get their first job in the technical industry. And how long does that take? Say, say I, I kind of like tech. I would kind of like to learn how to design websites or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting fresh from today. How long would it take me to get the certification? So it's actually a series of up to eight certifications. And the first one can be done in, in, in a week or two, um, you know, if you're, if you're aggressive. It really, it's hard to answer how long does it take because the people who join the Framework Television program are from such different backgrounds and have such different constraints on their time. Um, we have everyone from, I know we have one person who's a flight attendant has been through our program who now does web development on the side. Um, and in the current situation, maybe doing it full time. Um, we've had, you know, public school teachers. We've had people who work in other areas of IT, like for example, someone on a help desk who wants to advance their careers and their skill sets. But you know, if you look at our people and, and their personal lives, you know, we have everything from single dads to grandfathers and grandmothers in our program. And the program is really built so you can get through it no matter what your life circumstances are. So if you're a busy, mom with kids that you're, you know, shuffling from place to place and doing homeschool right now, you know, you can still carve out time and progress in the program. That's because we don't require you to be in any one place at any given time. We don't meet like, for example, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Um, and it's self-paced, so you can make progress at your own pace, which is certainly going to be helpful for people whose schedule varies or have a lot of demands on their time. We want everyone to be making forward progress, but not necessarily making forward progress at the same speed. Right. So there are people that might need more time and there are people like me that don't sleep because I'm worried about stuff so I can get up and do the program and say, this is getting me one step closer to getting a paying gig that will make help support my family or. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm a 5 a.m. morning routine guy myself, um, you know, up seven days a week at five. I have a routine that I do in the morning that includes self-improvement. So just as an example, I read every morning for 30 to 45 minutes on something related to business building, entrepreneurship, or personal health. Um, someone could conceivably dedicate that time to learning coding, development, and design. You know, it's, it's really up to you. Um, I, you know, I, I, I tell people half kiddingly, you know, that, uh, you know, everyone seems to have time to to keep up with what happened with uh, the Tiger Show, whatever that was called. Oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> right? But, you know, when it comes to self-improvement, we don't spend enough time doing the things we need to do 
to get to the next level in our jobs, careers, and our lives. I've always been someone who encourages people to do that. So we actually have built into our program things like Accountability Monday, where we encourage everyone to make an accountability statement. Here's what I am going to do this week in order to move forward in the program. Now, what that does is it makes you publicly accountable for actually doing it. If you say you're gonna do it, you're more likely to do it. But two, it just gets people in the habit of setting small goals and small accomplishments. And then we have you know, big rewards built into the, into the program, like earning a certification or you know, completing a project that we share with the community. So there's a lot of intrinsic rewards, but in the end, you know, if you are not the type of person who can um, motivate themselves to move forward, who can, um, you know, really dedicate themselves to learning, you're not right for the program because we can't, we can't give that to you. But we certainly can give you everything else if you can make the constant effort to move forward and, and you know, work on a regular basis, you're going to be successful. There's no one who's put in the time who we haven't been able to teach. That's good to know, because that was going to be my next question. Like, how smart do you have to be to be able to do this? And I mean, and how tech oriented in the first place? So, you know, how smart do you have to be? Uh, average, you know, I mean, you don't have to be a math genius. You don't have to um, have any previous technical experience. You do have to know your way around your Windows or Mac operating system um, and, and, you know, be fairly comfortable with it. But beyond that, I mean, these are skills, not talents. So there's nothing inborn about learning this. It's, it's a matter of doing the activities, watching the videos and participating in the community and you'll move forward. Yeah, people move forward at different paces, but everyone moves, moves forward. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think the things that make people successful, especially non-traditional people who are going into development are sometimes the previous experiences they've had outside the field. I'll just give you an example. We had someone go through our program who uh, actually is, is uh, in Connecticut and was in the, uh, was a prison um, guard. And uh, he got hurt on the job and, you know, was given some funds, but needed to find a new career. So when he completed the program, he actually found work with a company that builds software for corrections because he had that subject matter expertise and that plus the technical skills was really a good combination for him. That's brilliant. You know, I, I do like to brag a little about my son, <laughs> but my son got a biochem degree, mm -hmm. and, but it was very low paying and very frustrating for him. So he went and got a master's in bioinformatics, which is a computer science piece that people use to program for biochem and more than doubled his salary and just loved the programming piece, but they needed the bio piece too. So I do think that what you have is like cross fertilizes with a lot of other kinds of careers, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, their subject domain knowledge in something outside of computer science, we found is figured into the hiring decision about 30 to 40% of the time. So, you know, someone who taught high school working in a ed tech type of environment, you know, that previous experience is very valuable. The previous example I gave, of the um, corrections officer who was able to move into tech. You know, it's, it's really, you know, people think being an older learner or a non-traditional learner is a disadvantage, but if you play it right, you can really move your, your previous experience into your new career and, and combine the two. And a lot of people find that very satisfying. So do you know, if you have an, a ballpark number at all about how many people have gone through your program and gotten jobs as a result? It's hard to tell because our program was very diffuse for a long time and that people might take a course or two. It wasn't organized as a program. I can tell you that we've taught over a million people. We've certified over 10,000. Um, and that, you know, we do have success stories that you can find, you know, for our program. And, you know, I mean, it is so low risk because you can start for free. If you go to our website at frameworktv.com, you are able to sign up immediately for free. I'll show you here. 
So you can go to frameworktv.com and first thing you can do is just click join for free with your full name and email. You can become a member and have access to all of the free material where you can learn. And that includes different shows where we teach things like fundamentals. So this is Python fundamentals. And then moving on to projects that you can use to build out a portfolio. So you have a lot of those projects that are available for free. One of those would be building a Google Maps application or a tip calculator application. And you know, it's not just me who's teaching you. Um, we have a cast of experts who you know, have different areas of expertise in which they're teaching different shows and programs. So, you know, Kristen Rourke, who's one of the uh, world's leading experts on InDesign, she's out of the Boston area, uh, built our Building Blocks of InDesign class. Mark Hannon, who's been a graphic designer for 45 years, built our Photoshop fundamentals. Um, Jack Bushnell, uh, who's an expert in Unity, built our course One Up Game Development. So you're gonna have exposure to a lot of different instructors, cast members who have different areas of expertise. I teach the web development and the mobile development because that happens to be my area of expertise. The certifications you earn through our program too, they're real certifications, they're backed by credential.net and they link directly to your LinkedIn account. So if you link your LinkedIn account to your credential.net account where your certifications live, these will automatically appear on your LinkedIn and the reason that's important is because oftentimes people will search by a specific credential or certification for employees. And of course, the most important thing is the biggest question we get is where do I start? So we provide a roadmap through our certifications and our program that helps people figure out exactly what order to go in. And we also provide a support program where you have instructors, other members, et cetera, who are available to help you as you get through the program. Well, this is extremely well developed. How long have you been doing this? I have been teaching people how to code for 20 years. Um, the first iteration of our company was called learn to program.tv. That was a little bit of a different model and actually we sold that. So this is a different approach to teaching people coding um, and development where, you know, the main innovation here is access. This is accessible on the web, on your streaming video device, your Roku or Amazon Fire TV, uh, on your mobile device. So really it's accessed anywhere and there's so much great free content with new content coming out every Friday. You really can learn a tremendous am a amount without spending a dime. But then of course, if you're really gung ho and really wanna move quickly, we've got our professional program, which I can tell you is less expensive than just about anything else out there. We've made it very, very affordable because we want people to gain these skills, improve their lives, and be able to enter the tech industry. Wow, I can see how useful it could be, especially on mobile, because when things get a little bit back to normal, if you're on a train, if you're on a plane, if you're sitting at a kid's soccer game, if you're at a swim meet, what, you know, times when you can focus on something. Wait a minute, are you saying kids' swim meets are not the most entertaining thing you could go see? <laughs> you get the 30 seconds of watching your kids swim. <laughs> right. And then 400 kids you don't know and don't care about. And they're all running around. <laughs> yeah. and, it's, and, and it's hot as hell and smells like chlorine. But other than that, it's great. Yeah, so, so, yeah. So I could really see how the mobile application could really help with this because, I, I mean, my kids are grown and gone now. But still, if we do go back to traveling, then that's a great time to use this. And yeah. like if you're waiting around in the car for your kid to come out of practice, or, I mean, wow, lots of ways to use this. And lot, I think everybody needs to know at least a little bit about this. I agree. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. This is, this is, this is, this is modern literacy, right? You know, it's, I, I, I give this example a lot in high school, you know, we teach kids biology and chemistry, which is important because you want them to be better consumers of science. You want them to be able to think critically, understand what they're talking about when they go see the doctor. But you know, today's uh, Gen Y and millennials and Gen Z spend 24 seven in digital media. Shouldn't they know about how it's built so they can think critically, so they can become creators, not just consumers of digital content. 
So, I mean, I think this is important stuff, and I, I just think the, the traditional education system hasn't quite caught up yet to just the amount of softwareization and digitalization that's gone on. I agree. It's as, almost as important as reading now. I'm honestly, I mean, and when my son did start taking programming classes, he loved it. Mm -hmm. it's, it is too bad that they didn't have it when he was in high school. He said he probably would have gotten a computer science degree, um, but he just was never exposed to it in high school. So it's, it's funny. Um, it's really varies very much by, by district. I went to high school in a, in a pretty progressive district in Connecticut and we had computer literacy, but no computer science. And then we're going back to the early nineties, but even today, you know, there isn't a huge computer science program. So there's, in, in, in where I live in Connecticut, there's a movement to get a, a requirement into high school for computer science, but we're not there yet. It seems to me, like you said, it's kind of a no brainer, right? I agree, but I do think, I wanna hit on one point that we brushed on lightly. Looking at the pictures of the people teaching your classes and talking to you and how personable and friendly you are, I do think people have stuck in their head that if they take an IT class, it's going to be something like this. It's very boring, but you've made it fun and interesting, and that's what would appeal to everybody, right? Yeah, no, I mean, I, look, I went to a top 10 computer science school um, and had some very eminent, famous professors who had you know, algorithms and, and named after them, but they couldn't teach their way out of a paper bag, some of them. And then I, I, I happened to take a couple of summer courses at a, at a regional college, a Southern Connecticut State here in Connecticut, where, you know, the people who work there actually are there to teach, not do research and, and, and you know, both are important, but I found that the desire to teach and the communication skills are the most important thing that help people learn from these types of programs. So we work very, very hard to find not just people who are experts in their field, but find people who understand how to communicate, how to teach, how adults learn. Um, you know, I'm personally have been a member of the Learning Guild for over 10 years, and I speak at their conferences every year. I'm very interested in What's the science behind learning? How do people's brains work? You know, what is, what is reality and what is myth? And, and that's integrated into the way we teach. Um, but I mean, it does start with having some personality and being fun. It absolutely does. So is there anything else that we should know about Framework TV and your programming skills and teaching? You know, they're just the programs open to anyone. We're especially interested in getting people who are not traditionally represented in coding into the field, which is, you know, just about everybody but white men, although we'll take them too. Um, you know, we really would like to encourage women, people of color, uh, and, and other types of minorities that are underrepresented in tech to try our program. It's no risk, right? You just go to frameworktv.com and click join for free and, and, and you're in. You'll start getting emails with content and have access to, to our content library. So. Highly recommend that people uh, do this and you know, spread the word to their friends. We're, we're a startup and we're trying to grow. And I think we offer something that, that has a unique value proposition. Wonderful, well thank you very much, Mark. Thanks Elizabeth, this was fun. Yeah.